Yes, it's December the 5th, 2018, and as you see, I've got some light and power for the first time ever in the carriage at home. That's what I've been doing for the last few weeks. So, now I can start doing the winter overhauls on the Jag, and uh, probably last through to the spring, which will include taking the radiator out. Taking the bonnet off first, taking the radiator out, changing the um, drive belts, um, overhauling the alternator, and maybe changing the water. I don't know. Really. We'll come to that one later. So, first thing to do is get her fired up, and take the cover off, I should say, get her fired up, and rub her out of them and get her up on some ramps.
take the varnish off and I'll come back to you. Here we are boys and girls, it's the uh, 9th of December 2018 and I'm just showing you what I'm proposing to do today. But first things first, luncheon I think. I've made myself a, a nice little seat. Mm, first, fairly uh, tasty luncheon consisting of a bit of bread, two sausages and some piccolini and a cup of coffee. And the paper of course. So before I continue, first things first, sustenance comes first. See you later. So here we are after luncheon. And it'll soon be tea time. Anyway, I would try joke. The first thing I've got to do is take that uh, grill out under the bonnet and above the bumper. That's held in position by a series of screws there, there. And would you believe behind the the badge there? So that means I've got to take the uh, the bonnet up to get it that if I can. The other thing I've got to do is remove that spoiler underneath. As you can see there, if I can open the which uh, I inexplicably uh, forgot to. Um, Tighten up last uh, earlier this year when I was working underneath there. So uh, that for this afternoon will be that for the time being. You also see I've got cardboard on the ground. That makes a uh, nice bit of insulation between the concrete because you no know, midwinter here now. So uh, it'll be quite cold down there. You can also see I've got a little lamp there, battery powered lamp which is portable and uh, it gives that quite a, well, quite a nice little light costs about 30 quid and it takes about two, two and a half hours to charge to give three hours of light so I'll get on with that now and I'll come back to you later there we are I said it would soon be tea time there's a coffee buttered scone scone if you've been posh and you see a set of stubby screwdrivers there which I had to go out and get in the meantime because the uh, the, the screws holding the grill onto the bonnet uh, nearly require stubby ones and I didn't have any so that was a quick good start I've also got a, probably another problem in that you can see here an RAC badge which is a special Jaguar one and I suspect that hides another screw underneath it and quite I'm going to get that off I don't know but we'll see in time bye for now well here we are the 9th of December Sunday the 9th of December and the big job for today is to get the bonnet off now to do so the Greek Bible says all you need to do is slack four bolts off well that one's easy enough, but there's one up there as well, which is virtually impossible to get to with normal spanners and sockets. So a couple of years ago I bought these tools, they're called crow's foot sockets, and I thought that yesterday afternoon after a bit of a struggle, would these work? And indeed they do. So they just go on an extension and you fit it in on the end of the uh, nut and you take it off like that. Yep. See what we're doing? So there's your answer for any awkward bolts, nuts, you can't get that very easily use the crow's foot spanner which hopefully you can see I'd already done it before, slacked it off before but not before marking where the, wash, the bolts and the washer head is otherwise it won't go in properly when you do it again or you won't line the bonnet up properly Which is a bit awkward to use.
but at least it does slack the, the head off without destroying the head in an awkwardly placed uh, 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 in an awkwardly placed head. So that's it for the next five few minutes and uh, I'll come back to you when I've got them all clear and my help comes around and then we'll lift the bodies off. First dropping it onto here then onto a dolly with polystyrene to stop the paint being shipped and then uh, when we do that I'll come back to you. Removing the bonnet with one woolly. <laughs> <laughs> Just lift it up. So the first got to think, last thing I've got to do is take this, this the, uh, bolt out and this fellow here one day woolly is going to hopefully help me get it off. So that's been out for 30 years or more. Are we ready? Yep, okay. Say when. Have to move that What's that going to do? That's just supporting it, it's coming out. It's not going to drop out, is it? It's going onto there. Oh, right, okay. Okay. Right, okay. It's alright, it's, it's steady now. It's steady, alright. Can you get down there? Let's get these out of the way. Do we have Okay. Two, three. Onto so there. Right. That's right. Oh, right. You'll we'll have to come forward a bit more. And onto the dolly. See, it wasn't that hard, was it? And quite light, actually. Yeah. He thought he was going to break his back doing this. Backwards. Watch Here we are, it's the 13th of December and it's 4.30 in the afternoon and it's already pitch dark outside so not too long now till the shorter stays than good. So what am we going to do today? Well it's to finally get this top plate off. In the meantime I've slacked off various nuts, bolts, disconnected wires and disconnected the, um, the radiator hoses as far as I can. Now I've got to lift it off. I had a bit of a problem with this air clear this air dryer but I've got it got it free now. And I didn't realise I had to take I've got to take this bar off here. A bit reluctant to do because I don't want to mark the paintwork on the on the bolt heads. I've also removed this equalization pipe which runs between the two banks. 
Uh, fortunately they don't make this anymore and there is a, a blockage on this side here somewhere which I've got to either try and clear one way or another and uh, might either do that by shoving the wire down it uh, or using heat. If I can't do that, that doesn't work, I'm going to have to uh, get someone to make me a new one I think if that can be done. Otherwise I don't know what I'm going to do. We'll come to that later though. In the meantime, here's the auxiliary coil. Quite why you want an auxiliary coil, I really don't know. There's two wires, cables running off it. One is white, one is um, uh, white with a black strap, a stripe running through it. And that goes through into the wiring loom somewhere down here. Which has got to be rerouted actually because just down here it runs very close to one of the belts and is in grave danger in my view of being caught up in the belts or the, the belts wearing it away. So I'm going to, when they reassemble things I'm going to have to reroute that. So I'll just try and get on with doing this. Uh, getting this belt up. Sometimes unfortunately you have to use brute force and one of the things is these washers, these grommets here, they don't know. The Book of Destructions, of course, never tell you how to do it. They totally ignore it. So I've had to go use my own initiative on that. So, what I did to get one off, I just had to use blues force. And away it comes. Well, something's come away anyway. And there we go. And there we are. There it is. We'll just have to disconnect the coil here. We can. Push it, mm -hmm. would you believe? Bolt it in. That's something I'm going to have to do first. Find the right spanner for that. And go from there. Be with you in a minute, I hope. Uh, right, uh, to do it, and then do which turns out to be a five sixteenths. And one of the problems with these, this card is you find some of the nuts and bolts are metric, and some are imperial. This, for instance, the dryer bolts here are, for instance, three uh, well, the three quarters of AF. So it's just a bit confusing, probably because they're American, I think. So let's see what happens. Don't forget to uh, put your nut back on where it came from. A bit of WD might help. So note which wire goes where. I've I've taken a post photograph of it. So hopefully I won't have too much problem in reassembling. See you put WD on it, even though it's not probably not been moved for over 30 years comes away quite easily because obviously the terminal is brass as well it helps enormously It's 
got to go out through that grommet there. So I'll just have to remove this for a second. I'll just lay it back onto the uh, top of the engine for now. So there we are, there's the top of the uh, radiator and oil coolers. This is the radiator obviously. And probably the first time in 31 years or so this has been seen the light of day. <laughs> or artificial light if you like. Let's see. Don't lose this. It stops it from rattling I presume. There we are. Quite how you're supposed to get that off. I really don't know. It's fairly manky underneath here. And uh, I think for now, until I find out what's what, yeah, that will have to do. And one more thing though, you should always keep your nuts and bolts relating to a certain area in a, in a, in a bag. In this case, I've used a sarni bag. That's a local colloquialism for you. For a sandwich bag, I might add, which is easily obtainable from your local supermarket. Also known as sarni bags in the northwest. Right, for now, that will do. So I've sorted myself out, and it's coffee time, of course, so I'll see you a bit later. Well, we're back again for one last effort today. It's getting pretty cold now. I've just been consulting the book of uh, well, the book anyway, the book of destructions I call it, and it says the uh, condenser, which is this is a condenser. I thought it was an air, uh, an oil cooler initially. I am silly. Should be able to just undo everything, and it should come out. But I've got to put plugs or seal the end of the air conditioning pipes off. So what I've done. I've got no plugs. Is to undo it like that. And I'm pulling some cling film from the kitchen and just wrap the end off like that. And I'll probably tomorrow I'll come back and put some ties on there. Just make sure it stays there. It's a bit. Anyway, the Book of Destruction says I can now lift this out. We shall see. Oh, I don't think so because I've got to undo that bit there. So, back to the spanners. Let's find a spanner that fits. It says 13 16, it's not big enough. So we'll go up to a 7 8, which fits. I'll remove my glasses and we'll give this a go. Uh, that is indeed tight, as you would expect. Let's see what happens. There we go. Nothing wrong with a bit of brute force sometimes. Let's see what happens. Now it should, according to the Book of Destructions, just lift that. We shall see. Oh, 
plenty in it does, wowee! I'm amazed. It's not gobsmacked. I'll just put that down there for a moment. We should have a look at the radiator. Where she is a bit manky, little wonder she was overheating. I've seen pictures of worse. The next job tomorrow is to lift this out somehow. Quite sure how at the present moment. So to end this sequence, here are a few uh, still shots of what I found behind the uh, the radiator, or more pertinently, what was stuck to it. And you can see here, this is just looking down. She looks quite clean, and uh, we'll see later it wasn't. And you can see at the top there was slight signs of water uh, of a weep there, and. Uh, Another point which is not significant at this point is that uh, the brass uh, plug there, when you're refilling a radiator, should be removed so the air comes out. When you're refilling the radiator and uh, so that prevents uh, air locks uh, forming in the system which can again cause overheating. So here now we can see what was actually uh, stuck between the uh, the oil cooler at the bottom and the and the radiator, which is little wonder why it is overheating because that that bottom uh, left hand side is totally s uh, solid with with muck, leaves and God knows what else. And when I cleaned the oil cooler out last year on the other side, it was just as bad. So little wonder she was um, she was getting very hot. So here's now a picture of the uh, front of the engine with the radiators and everything else removed and just shows what a goddamn awful mess it actually was down there. There have been oil leaks everywhere and I'm not too sure where they've all come from, whether it's from the um, the, oil, the oil cooler or is it the main uh, seal gone on the crankshaft or is it the remnants of the oil coming out of the air conditioning compressor. But only time will tell. In fact it took the oh, best part of a week to clean all this off. As you can see there I've uh, labelled all the uh, pertinent uh, piece of equipment there, the alternator, water pump and so on. Anyway, that's the uh, coming to the end of, of this segment and I uh, hope you've uh, well learned something. <laughs> I know what I did and um, uh, I'll uh, start work on the uh, following segments in the uh, next couple of days. <laughs>